Hello and welcome once again to the fight between ArcGIS on one side and uh, QGIS on the other side. And what I will show you today is a comparison of first exporting to the favorite uh, storage type of each system. So I'm exporting to a geo package with QGIS and I'm exporting to a file geo database. I don't really know whether this is the most supportive uh, or most supported and most preferred uh, storage opportunity or storage um, format for ArcGIS Pro, but I will use it as it is quite common in the ArcGIS world. Then I will uh, retransform them to um, a projected coordinate reference system and I will create some buffering. So stay tuned. Um, um, have a look. Uh, we will start right off with QGIS. So let's load some data set I've downloaded. You might have seen it from the last video. This is the street layer from OpenStreetMap for the Quebec region. So this is in, uh, I, I would suppose, WGS, yeah, 4326, EPSG code 4326. So let's I'll transform it and store it as a geo package. So we will go to export, save features as, and let's go with the geo package. Take a look, uh, we will store it here in documents, roads, not 83. Save this one, we will change the EPSG or the CRS to um, zone number 21. Let's have a look where, whether we can find it here. So it's NAD 38, zone number 21 north. Yeah, take this one. And now we have no other things we will keep in mind here. Yeah, let's create a spatial index. Let's press on OK. And now it works on. Let's have a look here how long this still should take. So around 12 15 seconds until this is finished maybe it's 20 seconds yeah we will make it as default and there it is so let's remove the old layer first before we move on We will show the feature count, so it's still the same amount of features. Now let's create a buffer for selection, right? So let's go to the open attribute table. As you might have seen from the last videos, this takes always a little bit longer compared to ArcGIS Pro. Now there's the attribute table. Let's create a selection. And we will create a selection on the attribute name. Like, well, let's have a look where are the uh, where are the roads with the letter P. Something is not working here. So we will use name like start with P. We'll select the features. There are 5,337 roads. Let's close this. Let's move the selection to the top. This takes some time as well. It's rereading the whole attribute table. Now there are the 5,337 roads. Now let's create, we'll close this, let's create a buffer around this. So we will use this roads layers. We will create a buffer with 1,000 meters in radius. And we will only work on the selected features. And we will store it 
once again in our uh, in our uh, yeah somehow preferred system a geo package we will store it on the on the desktop buffer not 83 p 1000 and the layer name should be buffer roads Press on run. Now there are our buffers. Let's have a look on the layer. Zoom in there. And these are all the streets with the buffers. So let us do the same in ArcGIS Pro. First of all, we will add some data, which is our um, OSM dataset from geofabric just load it to the screen still drawing now there is and we will export it to a geo database therefore right click on the file on the layer and go to data export features we will export it as with an a with this uh, this export we will export it to the file geodebase my project for gdb let's call it roads we will have to check the environments because we need to have a new output coordinate reference system so check this here zone number 21 and let's go to the projected utm nad 1983 i don't know why this is not somehow filtered press on ok now the crs has changed let's go back to the parameters output name is roads fields everything's cool we will leave it like this just press on ok although this takes some more time roughly about 35 to 40 seconds so let's wait a little bit i'll pause the video so exporting the feature set has taken roughly about 40 seconds so let's close this one remove the old layer and now maybe let's have a look on the file sizes right so let's go to um, documents first check the file sizes of my current project my project 4 the geodb has roughly 200 i don't know just 90 megabytes of data that's quite cool let's have a look again yeah 90 megabytes of data and if we go to databases my project gdb and refresh this one there's a roads layer as it is on the map now let's have a look on the on the there's the buffer layer let's have a look on the roads nad this has roughly 180 megabytes of data and the source data set was around 212 megabytes of data now as we have reprojected the data set let's go with the buffer tool but first before buffering we need to select our subset so let's open up the attribute table this is this is i have to admit this is fast right uh, let's go with select by attributes we will use a new expression the name should start with a p includes it does not ends with starts with our need starts with where it begins with yes it begins with p just press on ok now we have 5337 features that starts with p now let's go to the buffer tool input features should be roads roads buffer is fine we will take 1000 meters oh, of course one kilometer side type full we will stick everything that there is is there some way of um selecting just the selected features well i don't know so let's try this out right and run now
So now let's have a look here on the features. So these are just the selected features and the buffers for those. And well, the calculation was quite fast. So let's have a look on the details here. Took only three seconds. So it was a bit faster than the uh, buffer algorithm in QGIS. Let's have a look on the quality of the buffers. Looks nice, right? So there's some, yeah. Uh, they are a bit strange. Seems a bit strangely rendered here on my desk. But they look just fine. They look even better than in QGIS because I have now only chosen to select five segments. The number of segments is defining the roundness of the polygons. And so my polygons are not that perfectly round like here in QGIS. So that's the difference. So, but I can also not really see where I can alter this here in ArcGIS to get the same representation like in QGIS. But that's it. So for this, for the comparison itself, let's uh, sum it up. First of all, there's no real big difference between the two uh, the two two softwares. I see well, it looked like that the whole saving as geo package was faster than exporting that to a file geo database. And um, the result of the buffering algorithm looks much looks more compelling in QGIS uh, in ArcGIS Pro. So we have round circles, very cool. Uh, in QGIS, it was not that perfect. So we have that, um, yeah, how to call it? We have that uh, here with the with the um, with the segments of 90 degrees. So they are not perfectly round. These are um, somehow. Well, this is the default behavior of QGIS. But once again, thank you very much for watching. If there are any comments, drop them below. Otherwise, subscribe, take care, and goodbye.